right now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the mayor of this great city. Let's give a round of applause for the Honorable Ms. Linda Thompson. Thank you, John. To all the great speakers that came before me, I am so honored to be here with you this afternoon. It's good to see everyone here for this important rally. And I must say, if you haven't heard by now, or you don't know by now, this is a call to action. And it has been and it will remain until the judge hits that gavel. As we approach the court date for the trial about PA's voter ID law, it is imperative that we remain conscious, aware, and knowledgeable about the actions that are taking place in our own backyard, as well as what is happening across the country. The voter ID trial in Pennsylvania is set to begin in less than two weeks, and current speculation is that a decision may be rendered in early August. The NAACP notes that at least 31 states are considering laws to make it harder to vote by restricting early voting periods and enacting harsh voter ID laws. We cannot let this happen in Pennsylvania. We cannot let this happen in Pennsylvania. The issue, however, is bigger than Pennsylvania, bigger than me, and bigger than you. The Supreme Court's recent decision on Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act ended the coverage of formula for Section 5, which was the main active ingredient for Voting Rights Act. And now Congress is expected to create a new coverage formula. The ruling has already resulted in aggressive actions in several states to change voting laws and practices. We do not want Pennsylvania to be one of those states that implement a law resulting in the erection of artificial barriers that lead to voter suppression. In her dissent to the Supreme Court's 5-4 ruling on the Voting Rights Act, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg evoked the long history of persistent tactics that have been used to prevent minorities in the United States from voting such as changing polling, locations, changing polling hours, or eliminating early voting days, reducing the number of po polling places, packing minority and majority districts, dividing minority districts, changing multiple lingual voter assistance, changing election dates, canceling elections, and current focus on voter ID laws. This is already happening, and we should be concerned. We need the words of voting rights in the mouths of every citizen, black, Hispanic, Asian, old, young, disabled, every religion, every philosophy. We need environmental activists. We need the workers' rights folks, everybody. We all have to be engaged in this fight. Voting rights is the most precious social economic issue of our day, and the lack of protection of those rights in the greatest threat is the greatest threat to equality and democratic. Participation in this country, anybody who cares about those two things in whatever their area of specialty should be very active and very engaged in this process, not just talking in that language and should be using that language. Obviously, there are people who have the expertise who are going to take this fight to where it belongs. But that's what has to happen to really penetrate into every arena of the civil rights justice movement and to make every, everyone understand this issue is a priority. However, you and I must make our voices heard. There are three things we must do. First, be vigilant and knowledgeable about the issues and educate others about the importance of voting rights. Second, contact your congressperson and tell them that creating a new Section 5 coverage formula is a priority and it's something they must do. It doesn't matter if you live in that Section 5 covered jurisdictions or, or not. Remember, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And three, show up on August 28th for the march in Washington because mass mobilization is, going, is what's going on to move Congress. We have to be vigilant and keep the pressure on the issue so that Congress is forced to act. 
Folks on the other side of the issue are moving forward where, with their agenda, and we must keep our position on the active radar screen. As I close, I want to remind you of another summer, Freedom Summer, also known as the Mississippi Summer Project, launched in June 1964 to attempt to register as many black voters as possible in Mississippi, which had historically excluded many blacks from voting. The project also set up dozens of freedom schools and freedom houses and community centers in small towns throughout Mississippi to aid the local black population. Organized by the Council of Federated Organizations, a coalition of the Mississippi branches of the four major civil rights organizations, the NCC, CORE, NAACP, and the SCLC. Thousands of civil rights activists traveled to Mississippi and other states in the South to work toward ending the disenfranchisement of black citizens at the voting booth. Over the course of the 10-week project, four civil rights workers were killed, one in a head-on collision. At least three Mississippi blacks were murdered because of their, their support for the civil rights movement. Four people were critically wounded. Eight Freedom Summer workers were beaten. 1,062 people were arrested, volunteers and locals. 37 churches were bombed or burned. 30 black homes or businesses were bombed or burned. Now, al almost 50 years later, here we are. Different time, different circumstances, same issue. But the outcome must be fairness, justice, and voting rights for all. We cannot allow the blood, sweat, and tears of those thousands of people who fought for voting rights, some who gave their lives for the right to vote, to be cast aside for naught. It's your turn. It's our turn. It's your turn to take it up and take up that fight. Our foremothers and our forefathers laid that foundation, and it is our turn to ensure the legacy and the future. Share the word with your neighbors, family, friends, and community. Talk about it at the dinner table. Talk about it when you're leaving church. Tell them we are the ones that have been waiting, they have been waiting for, and that, and, and that once again, we will fight for right and what is right and not rest until there is justice for all. Now, we were told that the soul, this is about the soul of America. And just remember that God has the soul of America in the palm of his hands. And he will set the course of this direction. But faith without nothing, faith without works is nothing. So let us all get to that courtroom on Monday. Let that judge's heart be pierced with conviction that justice will roll down like righteous running water and victory is ours, said the Lord. March on, fight on, and be there. Thank you. Mayor Linda Thompson.